Hi everyone, it's me, Marcy. Glad to see you again. And today we're gonna do another class demo. What fun, huh? But first, we have a couple of things to talk about. Your monthly challenge in the Beginning Lamp Work Challenge group has been ocean or beach related. I hope you're doing well with it. And I wanted to show you a few things um, that relate to it. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is flip the camera around in a few minutes, and I'm sorry, it's kinda like show and tell, but sometimes I have things that I just wanna show you. So also, don't forget, uh, I have a lot of YouTube videos and most of the challenges, uh, the tutorials that I've done for our challenges are on YouTube and you can find them under looking under Marcy Lamberson. And I have a group called Glass Art and Beads by Marcy Lamberson on Facebook. So feel free to join me there. And let's see what else. Oh. Um, this is June of 2020 during the COVID-19 and right now I'm helping out a group that I belong to, the International Society of Glass Bead Makers. Yay, glass bead makers! Um, I belong to the group and they are having a special membership drive. So if you private message me on Facebook that you want to join the group, I can get you $25 off. It. So that would be really cool. Yeah, I see a bunch of your names popping up. This is wonderful. Thanks for joining me. So what I'm going to do is flip around the phone and show you a couple of things. First, ideas of things that you could do with your beads, some natural things, and then we're going to make a simple sea urchin, but maybe a little bit differently than some of you are doing. So let me flip you around. We'll start with show and tell, and then we'll get with the demo. Thanks, so glad you're here with me. See ya. Okay, so first things first. I wanted to show you a necklace that I had made years ago with some of the beads. I see you guys saying hi, thanks. And so you can see this is a very um, tarnished sil sterling silver chain, but I just added some of the sea glass that you had in some of the tutorials seashells just like the tutorials this is a different style starfish bead that I make but this is essentially what we've made this month that's easy to pop onto a necklace and I just added a couple of little extra beads to tie it together but it makes a real sweet little necklace and I didn't know whether any of you thought that you might want to do something like that so it's kind of fun to do and I also wanted to show you something else. Hang on a minute. Well, I'm gonna show you a couple of things. But a few years ago, I had made mermaid crowns and I used real seashells along with some of my lamp work. So you can see some of the crowns here, but you can imagine making those also yourself. And I used a crown base this one is missing its piece here. This goes up there. And I used pieces of vintage jewelry, some not vintage stuff that I had here. You can see some of the C-class that we make that I added into this one with the starfish or sea stars and some rhinestones and some bought seashells. Oh, this one is, is one of my glass seashells too. So you can add in one of my starfish in that one and then I've got a pink one also because I'm a sucker for pink and purple too. So I wanted to show you those crowns that I had made which are really a lot of fun to make and it might be something you might want to do with a little bit of your glass work that you're doing too. Sometimes it's fun to have a variety of things. Now also in the beginning group we made starfish already so Here's a starfish or sea star, and I just wanted to show the arms going up a little bit. And this one's pretty simple. It's pretty much just dots on top of it, isn't it? And see how you get the five dots also in the center. So this is just kind of give you just another visual of a real one. And oh, there goes my concentrator. Hang on a sec. Let's fix this. We gotta turn it off. 
here's my concentrator making noises, so I have to turn it off for a second and turn it back on again. Okay, we'll get back to the show and tell. Somebody had asked about making scallop shells or something along that line. And so I got, I have quite a collection of shells. I bet some of you guys do too. See how concave it is? I have not been able to duplicate that well and have a whole go through it as a sculptural piece yet. I'm still working on trying to figure out how I would do it, but I did want to mention that I'm thinking about it a lot more. Um, they have little imprint stamps for this kind of shape and the little beads. I think some of you have seen those, um, but I just wanted to mention that that one still is one that I haven't totally figured out yet, but I'm working on it. And um, I wanted to mention coral. I don't know whether we'll have time for coral today, but this is just some of my coral that I had picked up on one of my trips. And see how this would make really cool beads also? You could do it in ivory or white and see how you would probably want to acid etch them to get that lovely matte type finish on it. So anyhow, I thought I would mention the coral too, but today we are making sea urchins. So let's get those out. Sea urchins are so cool. They are, what, a dot bead, aren't they? They're a fancy dot bead, but they're a dot bead. And I think you don't have to put in all the dots. You can change the colors around, but they're so pretty and they're so delicate. Now, some people make these using hollows, which I get. I think they look really cool like that. But the way that we're gonna make them today is as a bead, so you could almost like wear it like this instead of with the hole going through there, we're going to make it on a base. So this is in, uh, indented there and um, it will make a different style of bead instead of a hollow one. But the hollow ones are really pretty also. And these come in different colors. Let me turn on my concentrator again. Sorry about that noise. Here we go. And I have a photo of some other ones. There are different kinds of urchins, sea urchins. And I love the Sputnik ones, those would be fun, but you see the different colors that they come in, the purples, the pinks, ivories, greens, different colors and stuff. So you have a lot of room to play with it or make up your own colors. So what I'm gonna do now is hook you into my little holder here and make sure that we're covered the best that we can be. Okay, and now we might as well get started. So, um, if I was making, there, there are a couple other ideas also. I noticed that sometimes sea urchins are used for little plant holders, because you know there's the wider hole at the bottom. I would do these, if you're thinking of doing something other than beads and you want to do something like this, have you ever seen the larger mandrels? Here are two of them, so you can see what they look like. These would be great. I would make them so that the big hole comes through here and I would build them off of the end so that it, it's, so that it um, doesn't have two holes in it, just one hole to hold the plant so you can water it and then this would be solid on the bottom. So you would make them kind of upside down so they would work like this. But I just thought I would give you that idea of using a large mandrel if you wanted to use them for plants also. But today we're gonna make them kind of like the way we had done flowers before. And I had noticed that there were a lot of colors of glass that could be fun to use with it. I pulled out Heffalump as one of the ideas, a sim glass, as well as crocus. Wouldn't crocus be gorgeous with white? I think those would make pretty purple ones. I got a dark pink out that's an effetre. I don't know how old some of these are because I tend to just keep glass around. This says 256. That's the color, and I forgot to look it up first, but it's kind of a lavender that's pretty effetre. 
and then also some other effetre neutrals if you're more into the neutrals. And if you're a glitzy person, some of the stripes could even be done with some pretty dichro on it too. This is a pink dichro that would be gorgeous and I think you can see some of the sparkle there. Okay, so what you would wanna do first is to um, make some stringer and I would do encased stringer where you add the transparent clear around it and then let me just see whether I can make this a little more up close. There we go. I think, how's that? Too close. We're going to try again a little less. That's pretty big. I'm going to hope that this works. Let me see what shows up right here. Okay, so I'm going to try and keep my bead right in this area as much as possible so you can see as much as you can. And somebody had said, can you make it closer? So I just used the magnifier and hopefully that will work for us this time. We're experimenting. Okay, so let's light a torch. I am using my minor torch, which I've used for forever. This. Sometimes if I haven't had my concentrator on long enough, it takes a while for me to get my flame right. There we go. And let's use a 332nd mantle. And thank you to the people who suggested making a sea urchin, because I haven't made one in years, but let's just do it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to make a base, and let me just grab Let's try this dark pink that's Epitre. I have a neutral flame here. This is dip and go blue sludge. I'm heating my mandrel. So it goes through two shades. It goes through gray and then it goes to a white once it's been heated all the way. And once it's turned the lightest color, then I take it out and keep it warm and I might just pop it through the flame again quickly. We aren't going to make huge ones because they take a while with all of the dots. And let's just make a base bead to start with. So I have the air conditioning on in the studio, but it is toasty out and my glasses are fogging up a little bit, which makes it just a little bit more of a challenge here. I'm gonna bring this up a little bit higher so you can see what I'm doing. I decided to work with the pink because it's such a soft glass and it's easier for me to bring it up higher for you to see in between times that I'm doing things. And you know, the straighter you apply the glass in, a perpendicular manner like this, the straighter it goes onto your mandrel, which is always helpful. Less of the ends for you to have to fix later on. So we're just winding and making a bit of a base bead shape. And we're going to marver it in just a minute. and the phone is going to wiggle a little bit. There we go. Okay, so I paused and look, look what happened, how out of shape it went because it's so soft. So we're gonna heat it up and then we'll marver it. Let's even this up a little bit before we marver it too. It will just make life easier. So I just heated it up to a glow and this is such soft glass, it's pretty easy to bring back into shape. I'm letting it cool a tiny bit before I marble it because it is so soft. And I'm just lightly turning it on my Kote marble, which is a Japanese style marble. Looks like this. And I love the metal and I love the width and the length for marbling. So let's add a little more glass and then we're going to press it. Hope you guys are all doing well. It was a good weekend here in Atlanta, Georgia. 
I'm working on some classes, but I haven't really decided yet when I want to put them online. So if you have preferences for things you want to learn online in a class, just send me a note or write it in the comments. I would love to hear from you. I think it's kind of fun having online classes. Okay, so I'm gonna press this with my little parallel mashers. And it's just a quick little gentle press. Okay, so then what I'm gonna do is the shape for, um, for a sea urchin is not round, it's kind of an ovaly shape. I have a pretty good shape there for a base. And what I'm gonna do is add a bunch of glass on top of one side. So we have one side that will be the bottom. So if you were gonna wear it as a ring or something, you could just put it down on a pad or you could wear it so it's facing up as a necklace or something like that also. So let's, first I'm gonna take off the chill marks on each side and then I'm gonna start heating up glass to put on top of it. And we're gonna build up like a small mountain, essentially. And I'm just keeping this warm in the back of the flame. Don't want it to get too cold. We would have problems, wouldn't we? That's the color. It's a pretty soft pink color. The color that I see on my pink sea urchins is probably closer to a peachy color which is that color that's hard to find because they don't make it anymore, but it's my favorite creationist messy color called Desert Pink. And I would use that a lot, except I've been hoarding my stash of it. And every time I find some, I go, okay, I'm gonna splurge and get a little bit more because I love the color so much. So Desert Pink would be my first choice, but I'm happy with any of the other pinks or purples or I would do neutrals also. I just thought adding a little bit of color would make it easier for you to see. So I added some glass to the top, as you can see. And I'm going to let it cool a tiny bit. I'm holding it upside down so it stretches down a little bit. I don't want it to get too flattened because I'm gonna flatten it some more. And now what I'm doing is heating the edges so it attaches to my base bead a little bit more. And I'm going to do it slowly because this is such mushy glass, it wants to uh, just kind of relax too much and melt into the other part. So I'm heating also, I'm heating and cooling, heating and cooling. When I turn it upside down to heat on the other side, I'm heating this part of the glass too so it melts into this part of the additional glass and I'm heating it from all sides and one of the fun things that I love about soft glass is that if you need to push it around you can you are the boss of it so I'm heating the different edges so it all connects and if you need to nudge it somewhere else just slightly heat it and move it around gently. Don't let it be too soft when you're going to nudge it though because that's when you'll have problems. You want it to be cooled quite a bit and then add a little more heat and gently nudge. Add a little more heat and gently nudge. You'll be happier that way. Okay, so now you can see we have a mound of it and don't worry, we're gonna be pressing it down a little bit. It looks pretty tall and we know that sea urchins are a little bit flatter. But what we're gonna do is heat the middle and press in the middle to make a hole. And these are, I think they're pin presses, pin something or others, whatever they are, they work great for making holes. If you don't have these, you can, if you don't have these, you could use like a mandrel of a different size that you want for your hole, whatever you wanna use. But to be able to press into this, I need to heat the top quite a bit so it will spread out. So I'm heating about halfway down on this pink bead. I need to have that glass spread out a little bit. So I'm heating and then I'm looking for the center and then I'm pressing. And what it does is it push, it's got a belly button now. It pushed it down quite a ways. 
and it also rounded it up quite a bit. So if I want to spread it out a little bit more, I can. Or maybe it would just be easier. You guys have options. You can push it in a little bit more, spread it out a little bit more. I think I want to add just a tiny bit more to the sides to widen it. So look how easy that is. This is the time to widen it if you want a slightly different shape. So I just added a little bit more glass to it, trying to show you different angles, and then we'll melt it in. And I'm using my brass stump shaper if I need to nudge it around a little bit. This is probably my favorite tool. You can just move the glass around where you want it to go. And the whole thing is heating and cooling, heating and cooling to make your glass go where you want it to go. So you can see where I've added a little extra glass right here and this side looks better. So this side now needs a little bit more extra glass. So let's do that next. We're almost there on the shape. And then after that, it's just adding dots and stripes, isn't it? It'll be very fast. Well, as fast as my dotting goes, I am not a fast dotter. Okay, so we added a little bit more, so there's a little more width. And I'm heating. And I'm watching the color. I don't want too much glow. And then I let it cool a bit before I hit some more of it with heat because I don't want the glass to stay too warm. Okay, so now we have, gosh, it almost looks like a pink donut, doesn't it? So you have a couple of options on this now because the rest is making lines, adding stripes. If you want to add stripes, um, adding dots. So if you want to add more color to it, you could take a stringer. Hang on a sec. Let me just cut this down so it's a little bit of whatever color, whether it's white or pink, and you can add stripes down and then add dots over it, which would be very pretty. Or you could take like, this one is an ivory and white encased stringer that I have. So it's paler than normal ivory. And this I think would be gorgeous with it if I wanted to tone it down a little bit or I could do dark pink and then add dots out of this or in white, you've got all kinds of options. But what I find is I have a hard time keeping lines straight sometimes. I'm just not that good. So I would use the tip of my stump shaper or you could use a razor if you, oops, use that noise, or the tips of a razor and you can just go and make a couple little lines so you know where you're going. And I would not add all the gazillion dots that they have. If you are into that kind of thing, please feel free to, but I tend to be a less is more indicate. So I would heat just a little bit and I would start at the bottom and I would just gently make a line there so I have something to follow. And then I would do the other side to meet it Well, to almost meet it. And I just need to indicate where the lines are, where I want to add the dots. We'll do it from this side. I start at the bottom and very gently press. And I like to start at the bottom. The reason why is if I start at the top, I might press down too much and make it even flatter. So see how I've got four guidelines on here? I could add more or I can just wing it from there. So I think, because I already have pink here, I tend to want to tone things down a little bit. And I would just do dots. And some of these are just straight, tiny little dots all the way down. Some are dots with little dots around it. I'm sorry, I can't do all of, Well, I can, but I think you would be bored to tears if I did that. So let me just keep the speed warm and let's add our little dots up and down here following the lines you can get fancy go large to small dots you can let me count one two three four five so I need to have five on this side also one 
So I did one at the top, one at the bottom. I'll do one in between. And then I know that, whoops, that one went in the wrong place, didn't it? Okay, that one went in the wrong place. So I could ignore it and hope that nobody noticed, but since you're all watching, what I'm gonna do is heat it and remove it the best that I can. And add a new one in there. See, I got most of it, so it doesn't show. Let me just add a new one in there. There we go. Uh, and we can't do five there because we've got the mandrel there, so we will do fewer. We will just make it match the best we can. Three look good. I don't know why I'm a little bit shaky today. You guys make me nervous. No, I'm kidding about that. So then I'll do another row in between these. If you are dot masters, and some of you did that big challenge and stuff that included a lot of dots, maybe you will want to add a whole bunch more than that. If I don't have a mandrel in the way, I want to do five dots down on each one. And you get the idea, but now I have to kind of finish this. What you don't want to do is melt them into the bead. If you do, then you saw how I plucked them off with my tweezers. That would be my first thing. Or if I had to, I would even consider melting it into the bead and then putting a dot of the base color over and then doing a new dot. But that would be definitely my plan B. Getting close, one more line. And we're almost there. All right. So you get the idea, and we have made a sea urchin bead. See how it's flat on the bottom. You've got your lines of dots around it. You can get fancy. Personally, I think I would want to acid etch these. So signing off, this is Marcy Lamberson. Hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining me, and catch you later. Bye.